Have you ever looked at an insect such as a praying mantis and thought it was staring right back at you? You might see a dark spot on each of its eyes that seems to follow your every move. That spot is called a pseudopupil, and it's actually an optical illusion created when you can see down into the tube-like omatidia that are pointing at you. Just imagine looking at a curved surface that is made up of inverted cones or tubes, and you'll get the idea. But it gets you thinking, what do insects really see? It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding. Typically, when movies show us a point of view from some bug-eyed creepy crawly, they almost always show the same image repeated over and over again in a honeycomb pattern. But think about it. How would vision like this help anything survive? For our fourth video on insect vision, we're exploring how insects may actually see the world around them. Now it's important to note we can't really know how insects experience vision because we can't think like them. And while we'll mostly focus on honeybees, don't forget there are hundreds of thousands of insect species out there, and they've all evolved differently, so assume there are exceptions to every one of our examples. In our previous videos in this series, we showed you how you can think of each omatidium in a compound eye as a kind of individual light sensor. Each one sends a bit of visual information to the insect's brain. So it's not a huge leap to think of this information as a pixel on a screen. When an insect's brain puts enough of these pixels together, it assembles an actual picture. This is sometimes called mosaic vision. And for insects that have a lot of omatidia packed into each eye, the result is a higher resolution mosaic. And the number of omatidia varies wildly across species. For example, the eyes of dragonflies can have up to 30,000. Then there's a type of worker ant in the Panera genus that has just one omatidium on each side of its head. Our worker honeybee has somewhere close to 5,500 omatidia in each eye, so not too shabby. But you also have to consider the shape of the eye and how that affects the field of view. Humans with our front-facing setback eyes only get about 210 degrees of view in a horizontal arc but a honeybee's compound eyes bulge out on opposite sides of its head, giving it about 300 degrees of view. For a bug, that's some serious fish eye. On top of that, in apposition compound eyes, the omatidia aren't necessarily spread out evenly. Some flying insects, especially predators such as dragonflies, have an area where the omatidia are more densely packed together, and this is called an acute zone. It gives these insects a region of higher resolution in their vision, and not surprisingly, it's right in that area where they're most often looking for prey. But resolution is only part of the puzzle. What do we know about the kind of information insect eyes collect? In the third video in this series, we illustrated how honeybees can detect polarized light with their ocelli. Well, a portion of the omatidia on the top of their compound eyes can too. So what do we mean by polarized light? When light rays from the sun reflect off air molecules in the atmosphere at close to 90 degrees, all the rays end up oscillating in virtually the same plane. In other words, the light is polarized. So if your eyes could detect polarity, you would see a band of polarized light 90 degrees away from the sun running across the sky. It would look like a stripe in the atmosphere, and you would still see it even if the sun itself was behind clouds. Entomologists have demonstrated that bees can use this band of polarity in the sky to navigate as they fly long distances to their nectar and pollen sources. But polarity isn't the only difference in what they see. Over a hundred years ago, a scientist named Carl von Frisch used a series of experiments to demonstrate that bees can see in color, but not quite the same colors that we see. The rainbow of colors that humans perceive is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. At one side of this visible light range, we have red. Then it goes to orange, yellow, green, blue, and finally to violet. For honeybees, the visible range is shorter and shifted. So they can't see red, but they can see ultraviolet. So what's the point of all this color talk? It's all about flowers. When a bee looks at a garden, it sees a totally different view than we do. For starters, white flowers aren't white. Flowers reflect and absorb different amounts of UV. So to a bee, this white sink foil actually looks more purple. Many flowers even have blotches of UV reflective pigments that create dramatic nectar guides. Bees can see these blotches, but they're totally invisible to us. Entomologists think these patterns help bees distinguish between different kinds of flowers and they may even work like bullseyes to help them zero in on the good stuff. Okay, so let's see if we can try and put all this stuff together to get an idea of what our world might look like if we were a honeybee. First, we have mosaic vision, which makes our world look pixelated. Then we have an increased field of view. So now it's about 300 degrees, so we can see more of our world. 
Then of course we can see polarized light, which creates this band across the sky that we can use as a guide as we fly around. Compared to humans, our visible light spectrum is shorter and has been shifted, so we can't see red, white looks more blue-green, and we can see ultraviolet light. And then finally we have an extra trio of simple eyes, the ocelli, right on top of our heads, and these may help to keep us level as we fly around. Hopefully this series has given you some idea of how cool insect vision is and how different the world must look to them. Of course, this is just the beginning. There's a lot more to explore. For example, how are the eyes of insect larvae different from the eyes of an adult insect? Have you ever wondered why bees have little hairs growing out of their eyes? And how are the eyes of aquatic insects different from terrestrial insects? Like we said, there's lots more to explore. Stay curious and keep asking questions and you never know, you might discover something that nobody else knows.